right, I think we should just go ahead and get started today. I am going to create a project using the inspiration box for this month and also um, using the, the, the birdhouse builder die set. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna show you some of the things that come in the inspiration box. If you're not familiar with the inspiration box, this is the monthly subscription box that Brutus Monroe offers and it comes jam packed. So, well, let me just switch the camera view really quick. Give it just a second to catch up. Okay, so this is the Four-Legged Friends November Inspiration Box. And if you love animals, and I know Donna does, then this is the box that you've been waiting for, for sure. So some of the things that come in the box, which by the way, is a nice box. These are great. I use them for lots of other things too. They're great for spring. They're great for, I use them all the time for sending things out again. They're just nice, sturdy boxes. Especially if you don't get to your kits right away, it's nice to have um, something nice and sturdy to store them in. Okay, well, I was gonna show you this last, but since it's right on top, I'll show it to you first. This is the Four-Legged Friends stamp set. And in the inspiration kit, you'll get a six by eight stamp set and also dies that coordinate. This uh, stamp set has 20 pieces and there are 17 coordinating dies. Look at all of those. So many cute things there. And some of the goodies that come along with that. Are, you Look at these sequins. You always get a five ounce uh, package of sequins and they will last you forever. These are amazing. And ribbon. I love Brutus Monroe ribbon. I say it all the time. You're probably sick of hearing me say it, but I'll say it again. I just love it. And this one's a good one. Look at, you've got all those neutrals. You can use those on anything. And then you get conversation uh, clippings. And I use those also all the time. We'll use some on this card. I'm not gonna use the ones from this month, but I am going to use, cause I wanna use up some of my autumn ones from last month. And you'll understand when I show you the project. So then you get a selection of pattern paper that coordinates with your box. You get two sheets of each of the prints. You get, these are uh, counterprinted card panels. And I should also mention that the conversation clippings are also printed with toner. So what that means is uh, if you do any kind of foiling, like heat foiling, then they will stick to the, they will stick to the toner. And, excuse my little dog, speaking of four-legged friends, all right. And then this is the glitter stock that Brutus Monroe carries, and it is absolutely amazing. You can rub it, and it doesn't, you know, you don't get a big rain, uh, glitter fall. Cuts really well with your dyes. And then you get a selection of layering weight cardstock, which is different every month. Okay, so now with all of that, I think we should move on to our project for today. But before we do, I do want to mention something. I, I'm afraid I'll forget if I don't do it right now. So on Wednesdays, uh, Brutus Monroe does Dill of the Day. And this one... There's deals always going on at Brutus Monroe. You need to follow if you haven't on Facebook because, or, and subscribe to the emails because you don't want to miss out on the cool deals. Sometimes they're just spur of the moment. So you want to make sure that you're getting all of the information. So this is called Flowered Heart. And I used this last month. I used it on um, some Halloween witches hats. This is just an incredibly versatile set. It's really pretty. These flowers are really gorgeous. And look at all of that. Today it is on sale for 60% off, which I believe made it like $12, I want to say. So you definitely want to check on that. And just to give you an idea, I was cleaning out my stuff and I found a, a project I made last year using this set. 
and you can see how pretty the little details are that come with this little set. So I thought I would show you that. I was glad I still had it. So don't forget, 60% off. Okay, so now let's get to today's project. We are going to use our cute little set. I've already picked this little guy out, but I'm thinking we might wanna add another step. So I think we're going to need, look, I even stamped it already just so that I could make sure I got everything done. Let's give this a little bone to And maybe just in case. I should go from the other side. I'm just gonna take the little food dish too. Okay, I think that will be good. So we're gonna use those little guys too. So I just need to hurry and ink those guys up and I'm using Raven ink. Because I haven't used them before, I'll probably need to re-ink it a few times. All right, so those of you watching, how many of you have furry friends? And if so, what pets do you have at your house? So we've got two dogs. We've got a little um, Maltese named Louie. And then we have a little terrier mix. What the mix is exactly, we're not completely sure because he is a rescue dog, but he, uh, his name is Buddy. And he is my crafting buddy. Right now they are outside because today they are a little bit obnoxious. <laughs> they were barking up the storm. Okay, so we've got these little guys that we're gonna use, but I thought it would be fun to incorporate the birdhouse builder set. So I was just looking at this the other day, and I just, it's one of those sets that I've had for a little while. And because I think sometimes being on the design team, I'm thinking so much about what's being released right now that sometimes I, I lose track of some of the things I've had for a little while. And, um, I was kind of excited to, to play with this and utilize it with what we are doing. I thought they were the perfect size to give our little dog a dog house. So I actually used, this is another die that um, obviously that's just not sitting in the set. We're gonna use this little guy and I've got the little roof there and several other little dies from this set. So we're gonna build a scene for this little dog. So I have already cut these. So uh, Farmhouse Grain is a really cool cardstock that British Mineral carries. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I'm gonna get a bigger piece of paper so that you can see it better maybe. Donna says she's poor dog. Donna, and you are the, like the biggest spoiler ever. You are, you're like the sweetest dog mommy ever. So can you see, is it showing up in the camera, the texture of the farmhouse grain? It's yeah. so fun, and, and it's fun to, to ink because you can, you can bring out that detail a little bit more. So this is just the white. It also comes in kind of a craft color, and that one's called, I want to say Aged Wagon. I think it's is what it's called or something like that. And then... Um, what I did was I wanted our doghouse to have a little more color. So I went ahead and I inked it. And I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's not, I mean, it's pretty pretty easy to figure out how I did that. Hi, Robin. I just used Simon Hurley Bee Sting and my blender brush, and that's how I came up with that red. I don't think that we need a big tutorial on that part. So the next thing we'll do, let's go ahead and start setting up our scene. Let me grab 
our card panel. We're gonna use this guy. Maybe we should color our, our little puppy first. What do you guys think? Let me just grab a couple of colors. It's mostly all one color, so that makes it easy. So I'm using Spectrum Noir. This is the tan blend. So we use this. I'm gonna use the lightest color first. The Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend tri markers are really great if you have not, uh, well, even if you have, but these are great alcohol markers. If you haven't tried alcohol markers, this is definitely what I would suggest starting with before you make a great big investment. So all three colors, when you're doing alcohol blends, typically you'll use two or three shades of the same type of color. And so with some brands, you have to buy more than one marker, but with the tri-blends, you've got all of them in one. And let's see. I was gonna do colored pencils on this guy, but I think that the markers are gonna look better with what we're doing. Isn't he just cute? I love this little dog. He or she, I guess. Ben. Okay. Isn't that cute? So now we're just gonna give it a little bit more definition. I'm gonna take the darkest color and you can see it tells you right on your marker, so you're not wondering what is what. You've got your light, your mid, and your dark. And we're gonna do dark next. We're just gonna go over a couple of the spots that we figure would be a little darker, a little more shaded maybe. Give it a little shadow. Probably right under his little chin. That's probably pretty good. Maybe a little bit right there. Okay, and this isn't a huge image, so I don't wanna overpower it. Can you hear my dogs? <laughs> Hard to tell that we have laminate flooring, huh? They make a beeline. They know where I am. Okay, so now we're just gonna blend that. We're pulling the color from the darker into that lighter. And then I'm just gonna go back to the lighter one and finish blending it out. So you can see it just gives it just a little bit more pizzazz, just a little more definition, a little bit more depth. We didn't go too crazy town on that. Who did? Heather. Hi, Heather. Thanks for joining us today. All right, I think we'll do a gray for his bowl. Let's see what I got here. I've got brown gray. Those are both brown gray, but I think I have an ice gray too, which if I can find it, yeah. Let's use the ice gray. So again, going with the lighter. And now we'll go ahead and get that dark one. Probably more so along the edge right here. And again, I'm not gonna go too crazy with the details on this, but I'll do a little bit. So I've got my mid-tone now. And now I'll just go back to the lighter again.
Okay. And now I've got this little bone that I'm just going to do very little to. I've got the Fair Skin Blend. I'm not really sure. Yeah, we'll just, I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of, I'm not even going to worry about the other, um, the mid-tone and the darker. I'm just giving it just a little bit of something. I think that's good enough. And we will fussy cut that in a second after we do all of this, okay? So, we are going to use some stencils today. So, I am not an expert at using this. I'm kind of guessing how to do it. So, <laughs> it, it might be a little bit interesting. So, bear with me. Basically, these are, uh, these are set the scene stencils and like I said, I'm, I'm winging it a little bit. Just looking for my, there it is, my washi. So I just kind of want to secure it down so it's not going to move on me. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my blending brush and I'm just gonna use some uh, Simon Harley's ink. This is my favorite color, but I'm not gonna go too crazy with it because I just want a light, just a little bit on there. This is Clear Skies. And I'm staying up close to the stencil because I'm mostly just wanting to get that edge. Might need one more piece of tape for that guy. So right now it doesn't even look like I'm putting anything on there, but when I move the stencil, you'll be able to see a little bit better. And you can go darker if you want. Okay, so let's see, see? So now I'm gonna move it over a little bit because clouds are Definitely all different. Let's see. So now we'll turn it over. Like I said, <laughs> I'm kind of winging it, so don't laugh. Maybe we'll do let's do it this way first. Actually, yeah. I'm gonna do the bottom part. So we'll just do this for a second. I think I need one more piece of tape. Hopefully I'm not too close to the bottom of the, let me move it up a little bit. I tend to work close to my body and then it makes it hard for you guys to see anything. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the bottom. See how that goes. Okay, let's see how that looks. That's working. So now maybe we'll just do one more little layer up here. Let's see what this does. Kind of overlapping, so I'm not sure how that will affect it, but taking that bullet for you if you've never used this so you can learn from my mistakes if it doesn't work out. Uh, don't move your stencil. That is one thing I can't say. Bob is stencil too. That looks good. Who said that? Heather. Oh, thanks, Heather. I will remember that.
Okay, let's see how we did. I think we'll do that, and then I think we'll just use a little bit to just kind of go along the edge a little bit. bring a little bit more blue into it without overwhelming it. All right, I think that works. Clouds are, they're, clouds are all different anyway, right? Clouds aren't really symmetrical at all. Okay, so now let's use this uh, stencil, which is part of the same set. This one is the grass part, of course. And we're just going to Get that set up. Need some more of my washi. And we'll have the basics for the first part of our card. So did people say what kind of pets they have? Or just Don, Donna. I know Donna did. Okay, so now I think just because I know me, I'm gonna put a little piece up there so that if I get a little heavy handed, it'll take up the, the ink excess. Okay, so now I'm gonna use some later gator and some fake plant. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just get a little bit on there. And I'm just, I just want it to have a couple of different depths to it. So I'm just kind of brushing downwards to kind of, you know, grass the way it grows, kind of. I mean, this grass is kind of moving all over the place, but for the basic idea, I just want a couple of... I have a cat. I love dogs, though. Uh, you know what? We had the same cat for 14 years. We loved our cat. And I did not ever think we would own a dog. <laughs> we had owned a really sweet Yorkie uh, before Benji was born, but we just could not get that cute little dog potty trained. We just, and then when we, when Benji came into the picture, we were like, you know what, my, I have a good friend who fell in love with him. She just loved him every time she came over and he loved her. And I just thought, you know what, she can give him more attention than I can right now, which for that time was a good move, I think. But I could not part with these guys. And I loved that dog too, but I knew I would get to see him. So that made it all that made it all work out. Okay, so now this is the later gator. And I'm gonna be a little heavier handed with that. And the, the little um, texture I was trying to get in there is subtle, but you can see that it's in there. Aren't they pretty, Heather? I love them too. I, you know, I really like Simon Hurley ink. It's always really, it comes out really vibrant and beautiful. And I, it's pretty much, I use that a lot. Dog, a lot, a lot. House oh, that is hard. Donna, do you think it's easier or harder when you have other dogs or does it even make a difference to, uh, I know with kids, sometimes it's easier if they have a kid to model after. I'm not sure if it's the same with pets. I don't know, Buddy hasn't learned some stuff yet. Yeah, Buddy is just about there. He's, but he's, because he still sometimes goes in his kennel at night, like not very often, but still, ooh, 
this was not a good idea. I used this on the one I did earlier and it didn't stick to my paper, but you know, now that I'm live, that's when it's gonna do it. Let's see if I can pull it off and save it. Hopefully it'll just have caught on that one end. You know? Okay, I think we can live with that. Maybe, it is bugging me. Oh, okay, good to know. All right, I have to confess, that's really gonna bother me. <laughs> I do have an, a backup that I will use, but I will show you how I get to that point first. Because that tape just ripped that off, darn it. Okay, so now, the tree builder set, or the birdhouse builder, I didn't really even show it to you. It's got everything you could want to make any kind of birdhouse. You've got a couple of birds. You've got the little holes, the little doors to the birdhouse. You've got these little hearts, these little dots you can do decorative things with. Um, all of these little guys. And then you've got all these leaves and these branches. And you can make them into trees or you can make them into a branch, like a bough, which we're going to do. We're going to have ours coming in from the side of the page. And one thing that was kind of fun about this project that I that we're working on is I wanted to incorporate some stenciling. So we had a lot of ink and some dyes and some stamps and just kind of play with all of it. So I will show you the, what I'll do is I'll finish this one with the inking and everything, but I'll actually assemble everything onto the other one that I started. So this stencil is called Stacked Foliage. What was that? Oh, thank you, Donna. Okay, so this is called Stacked Foliage, and it's meant to be a tree that you can use all of these uh, to build on and use different colors for each layer. But we're just going to use it to give us a little more depth for our tree that we're gonna make. We're gonna use both this stencil and we're gonna use this branch so that it looks like we've got a little bit more going on there. And I have enough washi tape in this one strip. Let me just, I may as well reuse it, right? So we'll go ahead and tape that down. And I will be careful not to tape it to the card this time because that didn't work out so good. Okay, so now I'm going to use, this is a vintage photo, Distress Oxide. And I'm just gonna use my blender brush with that. And I'm going to use that to create our little branch. we've got it on that one and then we're going to use just one of the patterns because I just want to give you'll see what I'm talking about but we just want to give a little bit more of an impression of like leaves coming off the tree I'm just gonna move this guy down and just kind of position it so it's not covering the branches and we're just going to use Honestly, I'm just gonna use my brushes and whatever's on my brushes. They've had a workout today. I've been doing a few different things. So I'm just going to use what's left on these for this. Cause this is just, just to give a little more texture to the background. So I've got some yellow here. This is my yellow brush, yellow and orange it looks like. And then I've got one that's kind of a red and orange brush that we were using earlier. So this one probably has a lot of red on it right now. May as well use up that product, right? Do a little bit there. And 
And if you don't feel like you have enough on your brush, go ahead and get some more. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of this brown in there. Okay. So what we came up with with that is we've got this right here. Okay. So now let me just move that stencil out of the way for a minute. I am going to use what's left on my brown blender a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit onto, this is a lunchbox, this cardstock, and oops, I figure we'll just add a little bit. It's pretty close, but just to make it just a little bit closer to that other color. All right. So I am going to use the other one, but I will show you, I just kind of angled it up because you know, the trees grow out from the inside. I didn't want to cut everything off, but I did kind of just angle it up. So that's how I got to this point. Okay. So now we can start adding some of our goodies. So let's use our dog house. Let's get that guy on there. And I think I'm just going to use some tissue tape for this, some easy tear tape. I feel like I want to wipe off my mat a little bit since I've been doing some blending just so I don't. Okay, so let's do our dog house just about right there. What do you guys think? I think that will work. I think we're going to move them over just a little bit. Donna's busy just watching. All right. Don't want you guys falling asleep on me. Okay, so now, this is kind of random, but I knew I needed an, an entryway for our little dog to get in, so I didn't have anything in this particular set that I felt like was going to do what I wanted it to do, but I did, I can't even remember the name of the set, uh, it just totally left my head. But we have an Easter set that's got a cute little bunny and a chick and a whole bunch of cute little dyes. It's a lot like this in that you can build other things. It's got a basket. And I thought, well, I'm just going to use that egg because the dog is going to cover up some of it. So you're not going to really be able to tell that it's more narrow on the bottom. And even if you did, big deal, right? I think it works just fine. And it's just the right, I think, just the right size. Robin said she's just enjoying Oh, Robin, you're so sweet. Thank you. Okay, so we'll put that down just a little lower. I think that's probably good right there. And now I'm just going to glue on this little roof before I lose it. All right, I'm going to move my pin to the white part of my glass mat because I am notorious for losing that thing. This is barely art glue, and it is really good. I really like it. I like the um, the fine tip. That's that's what sells it for me. So I'm just going to secure the roof down. Hopefully. All right. I think we got it. So we've got our little dog house. For a minute I'm gonna put this well honestly no because we're about to do a lot of gluing um actually no I will because let's do let's do the fussy cutting super quick thankfully we don't have a lot of it and it's pretty easy now this has dies and you might be wondering why I'm not using them and the only reason why is because all of our die cuts I don't have like a border around them and that really doesn't matter to most people. So feel free to create your own ending with that. But I just figured I would cut them out. So hopefully you can see me because I'm having to remind myself to stay on camera. Also, another tip when you're fussy cutting, 
is to move your paper. I know Heather reminds people all the time. Um, move the paper rather than trying to move your scissors. That last little fine detail. So I think that's super cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I like the mix. I like the mix of the inks and the graphics and the dyes and everything. I think it's really fun. So I haven't decided yet if the bone's gonna go in the bowl. We don't want him to be starving. There's no food in there. There is a food stamp. I just didn't use it, so. And honestly, I think we're gonna put it right in his bowl anyway, so I'm gonna cut that little extra shadow off. But perfect when you're putting it on. I love what the shadow did for that. Just having a hard time getting that little tiny. And this is why people love die cuts. <laughs> okay, almost got it. Okay, our little dog is going to have his bone now. And I think we'll just stick it right in his bowl. And then we're gonna do our little puppy. So cute. I can't promise I'll be on camera the whole time, but I am going to try to do it quicker, so. All right, this is the trickiest part, but it's we're close to being done, so bear with me for just a minute more and we can move on Do you guys like building scenes? I don't always like, I don't um, always do this kind of card. I enjoy this kind of card, but there are, you know, just like everyone else probably, sometimes you need a card that's quick. Sometimes you need a card that's just fun. Like sometimes that's one thing I enjoy about sometimes just pulling out the, um, the gel press. Sometimes I just want to, get messy but these ones are fun too okay we're not gonna bother with that little white piece I think we'll move them over far enough well we were gonna put him right in front of the door Jonathan, yeah. and we could actually just put dark we could just color that in if we want to I'm not feeling like I need to but if you are bothered by it when you're creating something like this you could definitely just color that in with black I said I'm not bothered by it. The truth is that I am, but I don't want to bore you. So <laughs> if you will forgive me, I might try <laughs> to hurry and get it done. Cheryl said, I love the look of the scenes when people do them. I've never really built a scene though. Oh, Cheryl, they are so much fun. Um, we have one collection called No Place Like Home, and it's perfect for building scenes. It's got like every accessory you could want to build a little porch scene. Okay, now I can relax. I'm so sorry. Thank you for putting up with my OCD-ness. Is that a word? <laughs> okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. I think let's go ahead and at least get our puppy on there. And then I think we'll build the leaves around it first before we go ahead with the um, with putting the dish on because we might want a few behind it. So I'm just using one of our easy tab foam dots. And these are just super convenient. He probably could come down just a little bit. Let me tell you a little secret about these foam dots. They're pretty sticky. So if I had waited any longer, I would probably not be able to peel them off. So. Keep that in mind so that you have everything placed exactly where you want it before you stick it down. Yeah, I like them down a little lower. Okay, so now comes the fun part. So I've used a mix of several different leaf dyes and I've used um, some of the sunset paper, some of the carved pumpkin and buttercream. And we're just going to, honestly, 
I'm just going to kind of randomly stick some little dots of glue. I'm not gonna be as strategic as I might be if I wasn't live and trying not to bore the heck out of somebody because I'm gluing leaves for too long. Know what I'm saying? We're gonna also put some on the ground. But I think we want this, this guy right there. We'll do this one there. Let's do kind of a bigger yellow one. Do we want that one on the tree or on the ground? We'll put this guy on the ground. Maybe over here. Some of it will probably get hidden by the dog bowl and that's okay. And then let's put a bunch of these little ones on there. Got the littler ones. Let's put hmm. let's go with orange on that. We're gonna need a little pile of leaves down here. See, I've got some glue there, but it's probably starting to get dry, so we'll we'll add a little more. So I want to ask how Sue is doing. She doesn't see her on Facebook anymore. Sue is doing great. Sue is a very, very fun, involved grandma. And so she, all of her kids have moved back to Utah. They did, um, at, they were all kind of all over the place. But now that she's got all of her kids in Utah near her, she is one busy lady because she's just being a fun grandma. Sue has, Sue is my sister, by the way, for those of you who don't know. And Sue has six kids. And I'm trying to remember how many grandkids she's at now. I won't try to do the math live because it would be... I have a hard enough time when I'm not, but she's, all three of her daughters have at least three kids. So she's got at least nine. I'm thinking she has, she may have 10 or 11. She's got one just about ready. So she's got, like I said, she's got a lot going on. Kathy says nine, I think. Okay, Kathy, thank you. <laughs> I was trying to think kid by kid. I know Morgan has four. So that that's ten. And then uh, Maddie has one that's almost, almost here. So, yeah. Kathy is my sister-in-law, and she and my brother have all granddaughters, and they call them their princesses. And those are some very lucky princesses. They have so much fun with their grandparents. I love watching their Facebook posts because they also live in Utah. I don't see them very often. I wish I did. <laughs> But they, um, yeah, they said the princess patrol, the princess patrol, even, even fancier. But yes, you can bet there's, there's going to be a princess date several times a month. It's lots of fun. Okay. I think we're almost done. Maybe we should put one over here. That's kind of, kind of blowing around. What do you guys think? Maybe just like that. Yeah, I feel like it needs it needs one more. 
that branch was just a little bare. Okay. All right. How fun. Now all we have to do is give our dog some food. Do we like it there or do we like it here? I think I still like it on this side. Other side. You like it on the other side? Yes. I like it on this that's, side. That's, that's, I'm you. <laughs> Okay, glad glad we're on the same page. I liked it before. You notice I wasn't changing it anyway. <laughs> it's like, eh, no. I liked it before you changed it, so we were on the same page that. Awesome. Okay. And now we just need to add our little our little bone and a little sentiment and get it on a little mat. I guess everything's little. I just realized I said little like three times. Yeah, this is cute. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Oh, Let's get it finished off. So let's use, this is the playful plaid, which this paper pack, oh my goodness, I love it. And we're gonna go ahead and use this for our mat. You know me, I, ha I love a mat on my card. I just think it makes it look nice and finished and tidy. And so now I'm just going to stick this little guy right on here. Hopefully it's centered. Okay, have you ever seen these before? Brutus Monroe carries already uh, scored and cut card bases. And I am telling you what, they are so convenient to have. All right, and then I'm just gonna use my little tool to give it a good crisp fold. We'll stick it on our mat. I usually just stick tape in the corners partly because this uh, easy tear tape is like the easy tab dots it is very sticky which is wonderful when you have something in the right place <laughs> so it, it does take a little bit of confidence to use it okay so let's get this lined up a little bit I'm going to use my glass mat to my advantage a little bit and hopefully be able to tell if it's the shadow always throws me off a little bit on the one corner okay I think we got it it is what it is at this point okay so now we just need to put our sentiment on it. And I'm just gonna use some more of the fall ones that I have. I'm thinking, maybe we'll use the black ones. I think the black is kind of a nice contrast. So we'll do, what have I got here? Um, we've got autumn greetings, we've got uh, falling for you. That's kind of cute with him, huh? Crisp days of fall seems to work. Leaves are falling, autumn is calling. Let me see what I've got. So usually I use the Fence Builder set to cut out my sentiments, which it looks like I'm gonna do that again. So let me grab that. It's pretty good getting everything ready, but I did not cut out my sentiments. So I'm going to just grab, let's see what fits. So the nice thing is that the fence builder has this nice long one. So if you have one like, I was thinking of using, where is it now? Leaves are falling, autumn is calling, is right here. And so now I can. And 
I'm Joanne just. Says she wants the set now. Isn't it cute? The stamp set or the so bird. The birdhouse builder is another really good. Just it's a good staple to have in your die stash because so many things can be made using the pieces. I love that about dies. I'm all about getting as much bang out of my buck as I can get. All right, I'm just gonna throw this through the die cut machine. Hopefully it's not too earthquakey. I apologize if it is. And we just about have it. Okay. I hope you didn't see my plates to my machine. They are so trashed. I am so overdue to buy new plates. Do you guys let your plates get so, so bad? I have a hard time when I'm, when I'm making an order or something, I'm like, what do I want? Do I want like, some cute new paper, cute dies, cute stamps, or plates? <laughs> and we need those plates. But yeah, they're not near as fun to buy. Okay, I'm kind of loving that. I like it right there. What do you guys think? It's not bad down there either, though. But I'm kind of liking... Hmm. Now that I did that, I think I kind of like it down lower. What do you guys think? Don says I have the birdhouse die by the skipper's kit of the month because I have so many and never touched, but I absolutely love what you did with this kit. Oh, Donna, talk to me next time because you are the first person I thought of when I saw what the kit was going to be. I can't tell you what kits are ahead of time, but I could tell you whether or not I think you would like it. And this one, I, I would have given you a heads up that it was one you wouldn't want to miss. Don and Jack both set up on top. Up on the top? Okay, we're going to do it on the top then. And maybe I'll even be able to get my glue to come out. It's a nice thing about this glue that it's so fine, but it does clog easily because it's so fine. But that's why you put the pin right back in. And it even comes with the pin. I think that's awesome. So you don't have to worry about if your pin is too thick. There we go. Okay. About right there, I think. Thanks, Dan. I have a clock in here now, guys. Cheryl says that's my favorite glue. Yeah, I really like it, Cheryl. We did a, a collaboration with them, and they sent us a like, really generous package to work with. And I'm hooked now. I, I love this glue. All right, I think that's it. I don't think we need anything else on this guy. So much for joining today I really had a lot of fun I hope you did too and I hope you will check out the inspiration box as well as Virtus Monroe has several subscriptions you can subscribe to the aqua pigment of the month which is a watercolor um, type of a product it, it's this liquid ink I just grabbed one that needs to be mixed up but super cool and there's stencils, there's dyes, there's a stamp of the month. The stamp of the month is like five bucks a month. It's super cheap. Um, and once you're subscribed to, you also get a discount. So it's also worth looking into. All right, I think I've covered everything and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.